Now, if you've been subscribed to any one of my channels for any amount of time, you should know my stance on Francis Chan and David Platt. I do believe that both of these men are false teachers that should be avoided. What they teach is dangerous. And I have this one subscriber who has been trying to change my mind for some time now regarding David Platt. And do you know what he uses as a reason as to why I should start following David Platt? He says, because David has memorized the first eight chapters of the book of Romans. Now, that is impressive it's, if it's true. But I don't care if he's memorized the whole Bible. Memorizing something doesn't make you a Christian. Believing and teaching what it says does. And he does not do that, at least not to the degree that I could, in good faith, follow him. So I want to play for you guys a clip of false teachers Francis Chan and David Platt having a discussion, and I'll give my interjection whenever I feel there's something important. Being Immediately, we just hit it off, and I say, hey, what's the Lord putting on your heart? And he goes, I feel like the Lord wants me to create this discipleship material, and, and discipleship has to be at the center of the church. I'm like... That's the same thing that's been on my heart. And I was working on the same thing. And we're like, well, why don't we just do this together um, and make one resource? Because if we can't partner, how similar we are theologically and everything else, then what hope is there for unity in the church? And so I feel like this is a little bit of an extension of that as we've both grown and, and maybe even differed in, view, in more views <laughs> Lately, we could list them. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right now, we uh. could just debate about them right now. <laughs> now um, but so the thing that David Platt and Francis agreed on that should set off red flags in your head is the fact that they take pride, actually take pride in both having differing views regarding the gospel, and they literally boast in it. Francis laughed about it. To them, it's no big deal. You believe that, and I believe this, and we can still come together. And the reason that they can do that and it not be a problem. Is because at the root of their devotion is a desire to exalt themselves above God and his word. Now, when we look back in Christian history, way back to the first century, this is nothing new. Okay, The Jewish elite at that time ended up breaking up into four different groups simply because they all believed different things. You had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and the Zealots. And they pretty much all had differing views on how to practice Judaism. But you know what? They were all able to come together as friends and discuss their differing views and their gods. And for them, it was okay. But when did it not become okay? When was it not okay? It became not okay when the Son of Man, our Lord, declared there is only one way to God. Not just that there's only one way, but that he is. Now, um, but, that's, but, but that's what I would just say, um, well, a couple things. One, I was just thanking God this morning for this brother, like he loves Jesus. And every time I'm around him, I love Jesus more as a result of being around him. I, we just were spending time together yesterday, and I'm just so thankful. But I just want to make the connection with what he just said. We don't, we don't agree on how to understand every text here. Like we are rock solid in our unity around Jesus. And the so God. after hearing what David Platt just said, the question then becomes, if that's true that the both of you have differing views, how then can you both be rock solid in your unity around Jesus and his gospel? Well, you can't be. It's not possible. When you look at and examine any biblical discussion panel, okay, let's take the Founders Ministry, for example. They just had their 2023 Founders Conference. And when you look at the men of God who were on the panel, was it a bunch of men that had different beliefs and different views regarding the gospel? No, it wasn't. They were all like-minded. Now, they may have had differing views on how to approach or execute certain things within the realm of biblical, but ultimately, they are not going to disagree with one another. They are going to be in agreement. I do remember Joe Beakey and Vody Bauckham had kind of a disagreement during the Q&A segment, and I liked how Paul Washer kind of played the mediator in a funny way to explain both of the men's position, and they ultimately believed the same thing. They just kind of had differing views on how to go about it, um, but they weren't disagreeing on what was biblical, Okay. What David and Francis are doing here, what they're preaching, it's totally different. It's totally opposite from that, and it's dangerous. I have so many young people that will come up to me. J'ai vu déjà tellement de jeunes personnes qui viennent à moi. And they say, I love the way you teach and preach. Et ils me disent, j'aime la façon comme tu prêches et tu enseignes. And then they'll say, and I also love to listen to this other guy teach and preach. Et ils me disent, et j'aime aussi entendre cet autre monsieur-là parler. And I think... Wow, this young person doesn't have much discernment. 
Et je me dis, cette personne, elle n'a pas un très bon discernement. Because they like what I preach. Parce qu'ils aiment ce que moi je prêche. They like what this other person's preaching. Et ils aiment ce que cette autre personne prêche. And our sermons totally contradict one another. <laughs> Et nos messages se contradisent complètement. So that's not showing much discernment. Donc ça ne montre pas beaucoup de discernement. You see, young people, I want you to follow Jesus Christ. Voyez, jeunes, je veux que vous suivez Jésus Christ. And I want you to be in the will of God. Et moi, je veux que vous soyez dans la volonté de Dieu. And the only way that's going to happen is hard work. Et la seule chose comment ça va se passer, c'est un travail très dur. And our culture is really not given to hard work. Et notre culture, elle aime pas trop le travail dur. You must study the scriptures. Vous devez étudier les écritures. You must study them correctly. Vous devez les étudier de la façon correcte. You must devote your life to knowing what God has said firsthand. Vous devez dévoter votre vie pour savoir qu'est-ce que Dieu a dit en première main. Yes, we can all learn from others. Oui, on peut toujours apprendre des autres. But there's not one person on this planet who's infallible. Mais il n'y a pas une seule personne dans cette planète qui ne fait qui ne commet pas d'erreur. We have errors of thinking. Nous commettons des erreurs dans nos pensées. Even the best preacher. Même le meilleur prédicateur. And we have errors of conduct. Et nous commettons des erreurs dans notre façon de nous conduire. Never forget the most godly Christian still is a sinner. N'oubliez jamais que le plus saint chrétien est encore un pécheur. That's the unique thing about Christianity. C'est ça la chose très unique sur le christianisme. There's only one hero in this story. Il n'y a qu'un héros dans cette histoire. And he's not a preacher. Et c'est pas un prédicateur. He's the son.